Hello, welcome back to Cedar Porch Homestead. Today we're going to be changing out our deep litter here in the chicken coop, and we're going to show you how we do that, why we do it the certain way we do it, and also what we do with all that old, spoiled, kind of nasty uh, deep litter that we get out of here, and how we really make it into something fantastic here for the homestead. And stick around, and we'll show you how we do that. Before we get our hands dirty outside, I brought you into the shop so I can tell you about some of the components that we use for our deep litter. The first and main component we use is a pine flake. Uh, these are the larger flakes. We've had some issues in the past where we use the smaller, finer uh, flake or a sawdust uh, when we were raising some baby chicks. And I will tell you from firsthand experience, it was a disaster. The sawdust or that fine flake mixed with their droppings and created little concrete booties that we then had to peel off individually off of each baby chick. They didn't enjoy it, we really didn't enjoy it. So let me go ahead and eliminate that ooh factor of <laughs> dealing with the fine flake. Go ahead and use the larger flakes. We get ours from Tractor Supply and it works out really well. We haven't had any other issues with using the flake. Uh, we have also switched from diatomaceous earth to a first Saturday lime. Uh, the reason we did that might be a little bit more anecdotal, but what we have found that works out best for us is the first Saturday lime seems to have a longer shelf life in the coop than the diatomaceous earth did. Uh, it does a better job for us, again, drying out their droppings, uh, keeping a more sanitary chicken coop, and it keeps the smells down. So that has worked out really well for us using the first Saturday lime. Courtney has also found a pretty ingenious way of applying it using this little plastic bucket she, that has a lid and the lid has little holes in it. So we just sprinkle it on top uh, as we're creating that deep litter. And then even as we're adding more material to that deep litter as the months go by. So now that we've talked about the components, I guess we go get our hands dirty, right? Can you believe the nerve of these chickens? making me wait. Here I am trying to clean their coop and I gotta wait on them while she lays an egg. Oh well. Well hello. All right so when we built this chicken coop we had in mind that we were going to use this deep litter method. So I built a little wood barrier here on the outside of the door and that's going to keep everything kind of tucked in. So what we need to do now is remove this and start shoveling some of this stuff out. Right? So before we start shoveling this out, let's talk about how the deep litter method works. So we use all these pine flakes to help absorb all their droppings. Now when chickens roost at night, they like roosting bars at the top part of their chicken coop. And all night long, they deposit everything that they ate all day long right there. Now, most of the time, what they do is they spend the day, as they're coming in and out of the coop to lay their eggs, they scratch into this deep litter and they mix their own droppings into the pine flake. And that just creates a compost system in and of itself to help break down all those nitrogen rich droppings. So when you're building your coop, one of the things to keep in mind that we found is one, build it high enough that you can easily put a wheelbarrow right underneath it. And the second thing we found is making a door big enough so you can use the scoop shovel and that makes the process go a whole lot faster. So what do you do with all the pine shavings? Let's go. Right, so this is going to be our winter compost. This is where the deep litter method is really worth its weight in gold because we can take all that deep litter that has been accumulating chicken droppings for about the last six or seven months and we move it over to our winter compost. And right now it is the end of November 
And our winter compost is really important because we will now spend the next four to five months letting this stuff break down. We will, if we remember, turn it about every two or three weeks to reinvigorate and build up that heat that a compost uh, pile needs to continue the breakdown. So come March, uh, mid-March, this, once it can be sifted and you will have amazing compost from chicken manure and pine shavings. Now with ours, we add a few more things. Chicken, uh, we add our kitchen scraps. We add uh, rabbit manure from our bunnies. Uh, we also add leaves, sticks, uh, garden scraps from uh, our garden and it does a wonderful job. Now, this is our first year with this compost, but in the past, we have done a successful compost this exact same way, and the results have been amazing. All right, as you can see, you don't have to get your coop completely cleaned out. It actually will benefit you to leave just a little bit of the old deep litter. She's still very upset because she wants to lay an egg and I am bothering her chicken coop. But as long as you leave just a little bit of the bottom, a little bit of those microbes that help break down that compost are already still there. So. It actually starts the process a little bit faster. So this is probably the easiest part and that's just reloading and getting all your deep litter back in. So we take our first Saturday lime and our shaker and on the very bottom, I just like to put a light coat. And then we start to add our shavings. You just gotta spread those shavings out. I like to add just a little bit more the first Saturday lime and what they'll do with these fresh shavings is they'll come in and actually start to mix it up and scratch through it and mix this first Saturday lime nice and uh, even throughout the whole deep litter and then as the months go by and they start to soil this we just bring back more uh, pine flake and we just keep adding to it until probably mid-spring and then we start the process all over again And just like that, that's how we do our deep litter for our chicken coop. It's very simple. A lot of people like to overcomplicate things. We find simple just works better sometimes. We add enough pine shavings throughout the year that it continually soaks up those nitrogen droppings that the chickens are leaving behind. Uh, Joel Salatin would call it a carbonaceous diaper. It's a fancy way of saying uh, enough carbon to soak up all the nitrogen. Uh, we use the first Saturday lime that continues to dry out those chicken uh, droppings as well as keep our parasite load down. And about twice a year, or a good rule of thumb, is when you change your clocks, change your deep litter, create a compost system here in your own backyard or your farm or your homestead, 
and you will find that it creates some of the best growing medium that you can have for your own personal garden as well. Uh, we'd like to say thank you for watching our video. If you like our content, go ahead and hit that like button, the notification bell, and make sure you subscribe. Uh, we like to put out videos about once a week on things that we're doing here in our own backyard homestead. We have a lot of exciting things that are coming up uh, here in the next few months, and we would love for you to guys to come along with us as we are taking that journey of creating a sustainable backyard homestead.